President Kunkel, I have the privilege of presenting Mr. David Habiger and request that you confer upon him the St. Norbert College President's Medal. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you, Father Jim. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of St. Norbert College, I hereby confer upon you, David C. Habiger, the St. Norbert College President's Medal, Honoris Causa, with all its rights and privileges. Oh, stay loose, David. It is now my distinct pleasure to formally introduce David Heberger, who will give the 2016 commencement address. As you have all just heard, David is a well-respected member of the global community and a treasure to St. Norbert College. Please join me in welcoming David Heberger. Thank you, President Kunkel, trustees, for extending this invitation. It's an honor. Congratulations, class of 2016. Today around the world, commencement speeches are being dispensed by world leaders and celebrated authors, movie stars, Nobel laureates, and famous athletes. And you are trying to figure out how you got stuck with some guy you've never heard of. <laughs> and hopefully he won't yammer on too long. I promise I won't. Simply put, uh, I am you. I sat where you sat 25 years ago in that same seat. Excited, nervous, a bit tired. Yes, the Abbey Bar was still around back then. <laughs> and generally anxious about the next stage of life. We've likely had similar experiences here at St. Norbert. I lived in 3M and VMC and hiked through the freezing cold campus. I met my wife for the first time right over there. And I now find myself tasked with providing advice, wisdom, and optimistic platitudes. Candidly, I struggled with what I should communicate in this address. It's easy to pretend you know more than you do in this forum. A Google search tells me that I should tell you to work hard, play nice, never stop learning, get out of your comfort zone, make a difference, change the world, trust your instincts, pay it forward, be true to yourself, and Godspeed. <laughs> okay, all solid words of wisdom, but none that you probably haven't heard before or read on some Hallmark card. So in contemplating what I would communicate in this speech, I reflected on what I would have liked to have known in my own graduation. If I could travel back in time, what would I have told my younger self 25 years ago, other than buy some Apple stock and lose the bad 80s mullet haircut that <laughs> I've since gotten rid of? Parents, warning, you may not like the advice I would have given, but that comes at the end. First, I'd like to tell you two stories of failure during those 25 years. And I hope these will help you understand the reasoning behind the vice to follow at the end of this speech. My first story starts here at St. Norbert College, where I worked several jobs, one of which was giving me access to the school's video uh, cameras and editing equipment. I was allowed to use this equipment for side work, and this proved to be quite lucrative. So upon graduation, I decided to make a living producing documentaries. One of the first projects was on the Oneida Indian tribe. This was shortly after the release of the movie Dances with Wolves, starring Kevin Costner. So just out of college, with no money, experience, or clue what we were doing, my cohorts and I traveled from Chicago to Green Bay for a book signing by Michael Blake, the author of Dances with Wolves. I described our project to Michael and asked for Kevin Costner's phone number. After many calls, I finally reached Mr. Costner, at which point I gave him the guilt trip until he agreed to do a free voiceover intro for our project. His acceptance gave instant credibility to our pitch. PBS suddenly expressed support. Now's where you, you might expect to hear how we had a huge hit, won a Golden Globe, and became rich and famous. Well, that didn't happen. Unfortunately, we flamed out failed and actually never completed the project. So shortly after graduation, I failed fast. But I was lucky enough to figure out I had no passion or talent for documentaries. It also helped me realize it was the technology of movie making that I loved, not the storytelling. That failure created a new path, 
One that led me to the Lucasfilm team, whose startup, Sonic Solutions, I joined and ultimately led as CEO. We grew fast and took the company public. Our software is powering many of the ways you consume music and TV and movies today. This would not have happened if I hadn't asked for help, taken a risk, and ultimately failed. I learned some very important lessons that first year out of school. For starters, most people were in my, your, exact situation, entering the real world, trying to figure out what to do, relatively broke, and not much to lose. Kevin Costner was a struggling actor before his success, and Michael Blake was living in his car when he wrote Dances with Wolves. They both understood my situation. What I learned from that experience is the greater a person's ascent in life or business, the more likely they are willing to help, especially at this particular point in your life. Successful people in your chosen field will help if you ask. And don't be afraid to aim high when you look for help. Go to the top. More importantly, when you find success after you leave here, remember you have a karmic obligation to help others in the same way especially that inexperienced recent grad that calls on you someday. My next story takes place years later when I decided I wanted to start an electric car company. I know, a bit ambitious, but it was, in my mind, a very simple, small car company. Uh, I've always had a passion for engineering and technology and cars, so I helped start a company that would remove the gas engine from a new car or from an old classic car and then we'd convert these cars to electric. Around the same time, I was brainstorming with Martin Eberhardt, who was launching an electric car company called Tesla. While my business was wading cautiously into technology exploration and converting small numbers of cars, Martin was trying to build a real car company. Eventually, as Martin was moving out of the CEO role, he suggested that I consider taking over a CEO of Tesla and meet with his main investor, Elon Musk. So I proceeded to meet with Tesla management and board members. And eventually, Elon flew to Chicago for a lunch to discuss my interest in leading the company. And the first thing he asked was if he could buy the Porsche that I had just converted to all electric. And I foolishly told him no, but I would get him on the list for one later that year. What a mistake. This would have been the makings of a great story. Um, <laughs> He then asked, if I were hired as CEO of Tesla, what is the first thing I would do? It was with that poignant question in that exact instant of my life that I realized I had absolutely no clue how to build, let alone run a car company. <laughs> Posturing and giving a good answer was not going to change this truth. I suspect you know how this story ends. Elon Musk ultimately took over as CEO of Tesla. I dealt with reality and continued on my path in the software world. But my failure in building a car company taught me that following your passion is important, but you also need knowledge, skill, and some talent. Passion is simply not enough. You need to be willing to take a risk, work hard, and fail. As you leave this place and start your career, let your passion guide you into a field but be pragmatic about the discipline you pursue. Recognize this is the best time to figure out what you are really good at, and more importantly, what you suck at. <laughs> my wife thought I should get rid of that part, <laughs> but my daughter insisted it stays. It makes me seem more real. <laughs> it's gonna be a long ride home tonight. <laughs> so as time marches on, most people no longer have the luxury of career experimentation or figuring out what they are really good at. Class of 2016, this is the time in your life to take chances. Recognize your short life is only getting shorter. From a young age, I've always had an appreciation that life is short. When I was a year old, my mom died unexpectedly from an asthma attack. My dad became a widower with a lot of new responsibility. Fortunately, when I was four, he remarried another widow, whose three-year-old daughter and five-year-old son became my brother and sister. I'm lucky. 
blessed with a wonderful family and two of the best parents anyone could ask for. They sat at this ceremony 25 years ago, no doubt concerned about what I would do with my life. To their credit, they never pushed me to get a safe and secure job. Rather, I was allowed the opportunity to find my way without pressure, a valuable graduation gift. I truly hope, truly hope your parents will provide you with that same gift as you leave the protective boundaries of St. Norbert College. This gift will allow you to embrace the wonderful planet on which we live. It's a great time to be alive. By any measure, humanity is smarter, healthier, safer, with the highest standard of living ever. I'm not suggesting you should be complacent about the problems society faces or that you shouldn't work to right the wrongs of this world. Quite the opposite. Given your privileged situation, you have a responsibility, an obligation even, to give back and contribute. You're graduating from a wonderful school with opportunity abound. Take advantage of this while you can. As the years march on, you will increasingly hear people say, when I was younger, I should have. These people played it safe at the one moment in time they were in a unique position, your position. Today you're unconstrained with few assets other than the value and knowledge you have inside of you. Perhaps you're broke, even in debt, with some student loans, but you can afford to fail and without consequence in a way you will likely never have again. Let me be clear, when you're older, taking risks and failure has a much higher price. You'll increasingly be laden with more obligations. You might have a house, a family, at which point you are potentially taking a risk at the expense of others. Risk and failure are on sale today. They're cheap and the price is only going up. So don't squander this opportunity. Oh, and finally, what would I have told my younger self 25 years ago? The advice your parents may not like. Whatever you do, do not settle. Do not settle for the safe and secure job at the big company. These jobs will always be there. Now is the time to swing for the fences, take some chances, see if you can find the thing you love doing and make a meaningful impact on the world. Family, faculty, trustees, graduates, thank you for including me in your commencement. Congratulations, class of 2016. Oh, and Godspeed.